from snakes to lizards to frogs to tortoises to gerbils, hamsters, guinea pigs, bunny rabbits, chinchillas, pretty much you name it, we've had it. For my son's eighth birthday, he asked if he could get a lizard. No, you can't get a lizard. What? <laughs> no. One time we did give in to fish, which I thought was going to be the easiest pet in the world, and I was so very wrong. First, I told him the horror story about how I killed this tortoise that was supposed to live for 50 years when I was in college. It's like, you know, if a college student can't handle a pet, an eight-year-old can't handle a pet. It didn't really work. If they come home from school and say, my friend has a gerbil and they say it's really nice, let's get one. I remind them of how many times a week we had to clean that cage and how bad it smelled in their room. I do volunteer them to be neighborhood pet sitters, so when our neighbors go on vacations and need someone to walk their dog or feed their cat. Uh, my kids definitely take over those responsibilities, and I think that's a good trade-off for not actually having our own pet. We added it up. It's like at least $300, plus the constant maintenance of getting crickets and whatever they eat all the time. And also, we're never having crickets in our house. Like, I see crickets in the house, I kill them. I don't buy them to keep here. If you go to the pet store, they're pretty lenient on letting you hold those pets. And I would say four times out of five, my kids have gotten nibbled on. And for the little kids, that kind of um, detours them of not really wanting to have that at home. The third and final step was the one that actually worked. Bribery. Instead of getting a lizard, we got an iPod Touch. I mean, it saved me like $100. And that thing, you can take it on trips. You can't take lizards on trips, you know? You don't have to feed your iPod Touch. 